Hello and welcome to this managerial accounting video where we go over journalizing manufacturing transactions. Um, in this particular example we don't have any overhead application so we're just going to look at all of the other journal entries. Okay you should have your handout printed out and your handout has these two pages on it. The first page has spaces to put the journal entries and the second page will show us what these look like when they are posted into some of the inventory and uh, related accounts. Alright so our first journal our first transaction is that $75,000 in raw materials were purchased for cash. Alright so remember raw materials inventory is an asset account and assets have debit balances so we're going to debit raw materials inventory for $75,000 and they tell us it was purchased for cash so we're going to credit cash. I'm going to post this entry up here into our raw materials inventory. We're just assuming there were no other transactions there up until now. Okay, so the next thing that happens is $67,000 in raw materials were requisitioned for use in production. So that means we took them out of our raw materials inventory and we're putting them into production. All right, so in journal entry form we're putting them from raw materials inventory into our work in process inventory. So work in process inventory is going up. We're going to debit work in process inventory and we're going to credit the raw materials inventory because that is going down. All right, let's put those up here so we have a credit to our raw materials inventory. And we have a debit for the same amount to our work in process inventory. Okay, next transaction is direct labor wages of 134,000 were incurred and paid. Okay, so remember materials and labor are both going into our production so that's going that's also going to be a debit to work in process and it tells you here that they were paid so that means we're going to credit cash and let's put that debit to our work in process inventory so so far in our work in process inventory we have our direct materials and we have our direct labor. Next, additional manufacturing overhead costs of 126,000 were incurred and paid. We have indirect materials of 6,000, indirect labor, factory depreciation, and other manufacturing overhead. Okay, so we have an account called manufacturing overhead or manufacturing overhead control. And we're going to debit that for all of our actual overhead costs. All right, so each of these are going to be represented by different credits. So for our indirect materials, we're going to credit our raw materials inventory. All right, because we took the materials out of our inventory. For our indirect labor, we're just going to credit cash because it's telling us that it was paid. I'm going to put wages payable here because if they hadn't been paid, then you would have to credit wages payable instead. Factory depreciation. Remember, our credit when we record depreciation is to accumulated depreciation. And that's not any different here. So we're not debiting depreciation expense like we normally do. We're debiting overhead, but our credit is to accumulated depreciation. And then our other manufacturing overhead, we're just going to credit cash. Okay, so let's post these. We're going to post our debit to manufacturing overhead control. We will credit um, our raw materials inventory
and the other two credits won't show here because we're only looking at our inventory accounts. Okay. Okay, products costing $150,000 were completed. So that means that the products that are in work in process were taken out of work in process and put into our finished goods inventory. So we're going to debit finished goods inventory. And we're going to credit work in process inventory. Okay, so we'll put our debit here. This is E, debit finished goods inventory. And then we're going to credit our work in process inventory. And letter E. Finally, products costing $120,000 were shipped to customers on account. The selling price of the goods was $220,000. Okay, so a lot of times students get these journal entries mixed up. There are two different journal entries. And I tell my students to remember all students can invest. Okay, and those four, first four letters will help us to remember what we're going to debit and credit here. So I'm going to debit accounts receivable. For the selling price of the goods, 220,000 and our credit is to sales revenue. Our second entry is to record the cost of goods sold and to remove the inventory. So we're going to debit cost of goods sold for the cost of the goods and we're going to credit our finished goods inventory For the cost. Okay, so let's put the debit into cost of goods sold. This is entry F. And let's credit our finished goods inventory. Okay, let's go back a minute and find our ending balances. Um, so I'm going to just put a line here. And so for our raw materials inventory, remember it's an asset. Assets have debit balances. We're going, we have a debit of 75 and we have credits of 73,000. So that means we're going to have a $2,000 balance in this account at the end of the period. Okay. All right. And here, put another line here. So this is going to be equal to our two debits. minus our one credit. So our ending balance will be 51,000. Our manufacturing overhead only has one entry. Finished goods inventory will have a balance of 30,000. Right? We have an increase of 150 and we have a decrease of 120 and our cost of goods sold has $120,000 in it. Okay. Let's answer one other question here. How much gross profit did this company have during the period? Let's take a look. We have, remember, gross profit is equal to sales revenue minus cost of goods sold. So our sales revenue was 220,000 and our cost of goods sold 120,000. So that means this company had gross profit for the period of 100,000 sales minus cost of goods sold. Okay. All right. So that is the end of our um, journal entries for manufacturing company. Um, I hope you find this helpful in your studies.